Alright guys, welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what we're going to be looking at is this um, particular plugin called File Manager. I've used it in a number of different cases. So we're going to be looking at how to actually do the basics for creating config files. And then in the future I'll be basically covering um, the more advanced things. So we're going to start with uh, how to read from the file. I know this might sound a little bit odd, but once you understand the reading process, you'll understand how the uh, other systems work because reading is pretty much like the most important thing. So first we're going to need a trigger of some sort that will support um, basically world and other um, dependencies. We're going to use the block broken for basically reading and then we can basically read uh, for or basically add to it right to the file when we place a block and then we can kind of see a counter system in play. So the reason I'm doing uh, block broken is because we have all these different uh, dependencies and it should be covered regardless of what we have. Uh, this obviously will vary but you're going to need a read block first and uh, obviously we can't do that because we don't have the variables at the moment so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add uh, one called file and then we're going to select the type of variable local variable to file and then we're going to also create one called uh, object which is going to be an object uh, local variable now these are specific ones in this plugin that you can basically select and then we can finally add our um, read block that we added down here. The variables will automatically be set up for the right ones. So we can see our object and our file is set up like that. All right, so once we've done that, uh, what we're gonna need to do is we're going to need to test if the file exists. If it doesn't exist and it tries reading from it, the game will crash, so we need to make sure that the file exists in that location. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a if statement and then we're going to basically um, just drop does file exist right onto there. Now if it does exist it should read this part and then we can basically print out a message. But we're going to need to get that value from the JSON file. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab um, a few things. We need to make sure that we set up the, f the file path correctly. So we're going to assign the file variable to this particular block which will allow us to specify the location. So we're going to start with the location of the file. So we need to get create text width and then we're going to go ahead and go back to file manager and then somewhere in here there should be um, game directory. I think I might have just passed it. Uh, it's right here. So we want to get the game directory and then we want to use the path. We're going to do forward slash config. You can put it any, in any folder you want, but then we're going to go forward slash mod name. So basically this will be our folder name for our mod. Once we've done that, we can set the file. So I'm going to set it to dot JSON. Uh, basically uh, you can set it to anything. It should work, but in some cases the files like dot properties or something might have some issues with actually saving and reading and all that stuff. So keep that in mind when you're doing it. JSON is a really safe one to work with, so we can save it as a dot JSON. Once we've done that, that part is taken care of. Now we just need to get the variable from the thing. So we're going to create a local variable called um, uh, number... Uh, then we're going to call it uh, something else just so it's easier to identify. Then we're going to set this to a number variable and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to get the number variable from the object and then we're going to call it count. So basically what we want to do is get the count variable from the actual file itself. So this will make a little bit more sense once we get a little bit further when we're writing to the file. But at the moment, all you need to know is there's going to be a, a part of the code in there that's going to be called count, and we need to apply this to the local variable. So once we have applied it to the local variable, what we can do is we can go ahead and print this out to the player. So we're going to print the message, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create text with, and then we're just going to add a message here called uh, total uh, blocks 
and placed. And then what we want is our value. So we're going to go into local variables and grab our local variable. And then we can basically apply it to that particular thing. So it's going to print out the local variable. All right, so that's the reading mechanics. Uh, let's go on and start learning the write mechanics. It's not too much different. So all we need to do is create, basically duplicate. Um, well, we could create it from scratch. That would work, but it's easier to duplicate it. So what we're going to do is we're going to quickly duplicate the file. And then what we're going to do is make some changes to it. Now, it would be the same process, basically, for setting up the the actual file part so this would be the same that you want for reading it and then for writing uh, this you need to make sure that the file exists first and then what we need to do is use the read block and we're going to basically get the variable and then we're going to increase it by the number that we want now you can assign that value uh, to any value you want so if you could have it pretty much anything but we're going to make a simple counter system so it increases the value every time we place a block so very similar math to variables in general uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set placed for the global trigger and then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and go to the uh, file manager and then we want this block right here and we're going to drag that directly into our read block and then we're going to need a math operator so we're going to increase this by one uh, we're going to need the count so these two variable names need to be the same for it to work properly so once we've done that we're going to increase that by one so basically this will count every time we place a block and it'll increase it by one and write to the file now we need a specific block to actually write to the file so right now we're just assigning a variable to a JSON object but we're not applying it uh, one of the things that we will need to do is create a message just to kind of indicate that we've basically added to the file itself so uh, one of the things that we need to do is write to the file. So we're going to put that directly after we've written all to the object file, the object variables. And once this happens, it's going to write it to the actual file. So if you do this, like without the read block, it's going to override your file and basically wipe it and reset it. Where if you put it inside a read block and write to it, then what it's going to do is it's going to update that specific variable without replacing any other data. So that's really important because in some cases you want to replace your file, in some cases you don't. So it depends on what you need for that particular thing. So we're going to put this in here and we're going to go ahead and just say that um, we have increased the value for the place block. Now, once we've done that, we need to actually make one called um, create, like to actually create the file first. Uh, we can we know how to read it, we know how to write it, but we still need to create it. So that's basically where this part comes in. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate this one more time. So again, if you wanted to like uh, put that on the outside, then you would be writing to the file, which we'll be basically doing when we create the file itself. So let's go ahead and we'll quickly save or duplicate that one. Uh, we could create a new procedure, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to duplicate it. It's probably the easiest way to do it once you have a file. Um, importing the procedures, uh, there's an issue at the moment where the JSON object uh, variable doesn't properly import. I'm sure uh, GolderEye on the author of the plugin will eventually figure it out, but uh, it's just something that is easier to duplicate at this moment. So we're going to test if the file does not exist. That's very important because we want to make sure that we create the file. So we're going to go to file manager and create that file. And then what we need to do is we need to basically apply the variables that we want in this particular file. So in this case, we're just going to set the value to something like zero and then we will be able to know that we created our the file was created so once we've done that we can basically just add a message uh, for the file creation or something like that um, it depends on how your procedure is structured you might want to set the values to very default values like zeros and empty strings or um, 
false statements uh, just so there's some sort of value that's you know a default value and if then trigger it through writing and reading uh, to the file but in this case we're just going to set it to zero and we're going to write to the file uh, the variable once it's uh, created so once we've done that what we can do is test in game and I'm going to just quickly um, break some blocks well play some blocks first so we're going to place uh, some cobblestone down and we'll see what the message output so it says the thing has increased every time that we basically place it and we can break it and then we can see that we have placed eight of these particular blocks if we keep placing them then it's gone up to 16 so we've increased it to 16 we can do it some more and it's gone up to 20 and it's gone up to 25 now so you can kind of see that how that basically works uh, if we go into our file resource packs open our resource pack folder and then what we can do is we can go to the run folder and then go to the config folder where we basically stored it and then we have the mod name and then this is the actual config file for what we created so that you can see it says 25 in here that's the last value that we basically added so basically that's where our config file would be added unless we added more directories so if you wanted to add like a player name or something like that like maybe it's specifically for a player you can do forward slash players and then you could uh, do the player name so we would create a text with like an, a text item and then we would basically get the display name of that particular player so we go to entities and basically drop that down here you can also uh, name the file the player name as well that would work as well um, and just put it in a player's folder as well so outside of that that's basically all the time that I have for today if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and I will see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out